Welcome to the Fox Learn. Particular instances of a class are called objects. The difference between a class and an object is the same as the difference between the concept of a dog and the particular dog who is sitting at your feet as you read this. You can't play fetch with the definition of a dog, only with an instance. The huge advantage of classes in object-oriented programming is that classes encapsulate the characteristics and capabilities of a type in a single, self-contained unit. Class behavior is created by writing methods, sometimes called member functions. A method is a routine that every object of the class can execute. For example, a dog class might have a bark method, and a list box class might have a sort method. Class state is maintained by fields, sometimes called member variables. Fields may be primitive types, an int to hold the age of the dog or a set of strings to hold the contents of the list box, or fields may be objects of other classes, for example, an employee class may have a field of type address. Finally, classes may also have properties, which act like methods to the creator of the class, but look like fields to clients of the class. A client is any object that interacts with instances of the class. When you define a new class, you define the characteristics of all objects of that class, as well as their behaviors. For example, if you create your own windowing operating system, you might want to create screen widgets, known as controls in Windows. One control of interest might be a list box, a control that is very useful for presenting a list of choices to the user and enabling the user to select from the list. List boxes have a variety of characteristics, height, width, location, and text color, for example. Programmers have also come to expect certain behaviors of list boxes they can be opened, closed, sorted, and so on. Object-oriented programming allows you to create a new type, list box, which encapsulates these characteristics and capabilities. To define a new type or class, you first declare it and then define its methods and fields. You declare a class using the class keyword. Instantiating objects, to make an actual instance, or object, of the dog class, you must declare the object and allocate memory for the object. These two steps combined are necessary to create, or instantiate, the object. The declaration alone doesn't actually create an instance, however. To create an instance of a class, you must also allocate memory for the object using the keyword new. Access modifiers, an access modifier determines which class methods including methods of other classes can see and use a member variable or method within a class. Public methods are part of the class's public interface, they define how this class behaves. Private methods are helper methods used by the public methods to accomplish the work of the class. The behavior of a class is defined by the methods of that class. To make your methods as flexible as possible, you can define parameters, information passed into the method when the method is invoked. Methods can take any number of parameters. The parameter list follows the method name and is enclosed in parentheses. Inside the parentheses, you provide the type of the parameter and the name that the method will use to refer to that parameter. You've seen in several places so far in this book that methods can return a type, or they can return nothing at all if the return type is void. You've mostly used void methods up until now, specifically main, although Ritalin, is a void method as well. The constructors you've worked with do return a value they return an instance of the class.
In fact, a member method is invoked whenever you instantiate an object. This method is called a constructor. Each time you define a class, you are free to define your own constructor, but if you don't, the compiler will provide one for you invisibly and automatically. If you do not explicitly initialize your member variables, they are initialized to innocuous values, integers to zero, strings to an empty string, and so on. If you know that certain member variables should always have the same value when the object is created, you can initialize the values of these member variables in an initializer, instead of having to do so in the constructor. You create an initializer by assigning an initial value to a class member. Although you normally set the properties of your object with a constructor, that's not the only way to do it. c -sharp also offers object initializers, which let you set any accessible members of your object when you create it. Notice that we set accessible, which means you can set public members, but not private ones. Suppose you have this dog class, with member fields that are public. Notice here that the constructor takes a string to set the dog's name, but it doesn't take a weight. That's fine, because weight is public, so you could easily set it later. With an object initializer, though, you can set the public weight immediately after you create the object. You create an instance of an anonymous type with the keyword new, just as you would if you were instantiating an object of a declared class. Instead of passing parameters to a constructor, though, you use braces and define the member fields that you want your anonymous class to contain. You can use the var keyword to assign an instance of that class to a variable. The keyword this refers to the current instance of an object. The this reference is a hidden parameter in every non-static method of a class. There are three ways in which the this reference is typically used. The first way is to qualify instance members that have the same name as parameters, as in the following. The fields, properties, and methods of a class can be either instance members or static members. Instance members are associated with instances of a type, whereas static members are associated with the class itself, and not with any particular instance. All methods are instance methods unless you explicitly mark them with the keyword static. The vast majority of methods will be instance methods. The semantics of an instance method are that you are taking an action on a specific object. From time to time, however, it is convenient to be able to invoke a method without having an instance of the class, and for that, you will use a static method. Invoking static methods, static methods are said to operate on the class, rather than on an instance of the class. They do not have a this reference, as there is no instance to point to. Static methods cannot directly access non-static members. You will remember that main, is marked static. For main, to call a non-static method of any class, including its own class, it must instantiate an object. Using static fields, a common use of static member variables, or fields, is to keep track of the number of instances slash objects that currently exist for your class. Unlike many other programming languages, C, C++, Pascal, and so on, C Sharp provides garbage collection. Your objects are destroyed after you are done with them although not immediately after, they're destroyed when the garbage collection process runs, which is determined by the system. The eDisposable interface requires you to create a method named Dispose, which will be called by your clients. 
If you provide a dispose, method, you should stop the garbage collector from calling your object's destructor. To stop the garbage collector, call the static method gc.suppress finalize, passing in the this reference for your object. Your finalizer can then call your dispose, method. Objects created within methods are called local variables, as we discussed earlier. They are local to the method, as opposed to belonging to the whole object, as member variables are. The object is created within the method, used within the method, and then destroyed sometime after the method ends. Local objects are not part of the object's state they are temporary value holders, useful only within the particular method. Local variables of intrinsic types such as int are created on a portion of memory known as the stack. The stack is allocated and allocated as methods are invoked. When you start a method, all its local variables are created on the stack. When the method ends, local variables are destroyed. These variables are referred to as local because they exist, and are visible, only during the lifetime of the method. They are said to have local scope. When the method ends, the variable goes out of scope and is destroyed. C# -sharp divides the world of types into value types and reference types. Value types are created on the stack. All the intrinsic types, int, long, are value types, as are structs, discussed later in this chapter, and thus are created on the stack. Objects, on the other hand, are reference types. Reference types are created on an undifferentiated block of memory known as the heap. When you declare an instance of a reference type, what you are actually declaring is a reference, which is a variable that refers to another object. When you define a new class, you declare its name with the class keyword, and then define its methods, fields, and properties. To instantiate an object, you declare the name of the class, followed by an identifier for the object, much as you would a local variable. You then need to allocate memory for the actual, unnamed, object that will be created on the heap, you do so with the keyword new. You invoke a method on an object by writing the name of the object, followed by the dot operator, and the method name followed by parentheses. Parameters, if any, are placed within the parentheses. Access modifiers dictate which methods of external classes can see and use a variable or method within a class. All members of the class are visible to all methods of its own class. Members marked public have no restrictions, and are visible to methods of any class. Members marked private are visible only to methods within the same class. Members marked protected are visible to methods within the same class, and methods in derived classes. If you know the return type of a method, you can use a method call any place you would use an instance of that type. A constructor is a special method invoked when a new object is created. If you do not define any constructors at all for your class, the compiler will provide a default constructor that does nothing. A default constructor is a constructor that takes no parameters. You are free to create your own default constructor for your class. You can initialize the values of your member variables when you define them in your class. Object initializers allow you to set the public fields of an object immediately after you create the object. Anonymous types allow you to create a class with no name, and initialize its fields immediately. The compiler will implicitly assign types to those fields. You can use the var keyword to create an instance of the anonymous object. The this keyword is used to refer to the current instance of an object. Every non-static method of a class has an implicit this variable passed into the method. 
static members are associated with the class itself, not with a particular instance. Static members are declared with the keyword static, and are invoked through the class name. Static methods do not have a this parameter because there is no instance to refer to. C# -sharp does not specifically require a finalizer method in your classes because the framework will destroy any object that is not in use. You should provide a dispose method if your class uses unmanaged resources. Local value type variables are created on the stack. When the method ends, these variables go out of scope and are destroyed. Objects are reference types, and are created on the heap. When you declare an instance of a reference type, you are actually creating a reference to that object's location in memory. If you declare a reference to an object on the heap within a method, when the method ends that reference is destroyed. If there are no remaining references to the object on the heap, the object itself is destroyed by the garbage collector at some later time. You can define a reference to an existing object by declaring the class and an identifier and then assigning to that identifier an existing object, the two identifiers now both refer to the same, unnamed, object on the heap. Thank you for watching this video.